There's something new on the St. Louis skyline. They're called tower cranes, and they are most commonly found looming hundreds of feet above partially constructed buildings, moving slowly but deliberately like grazing dinosaurs. Tower cranes have been around for about 20 years, but they're a relatively new sight here because of all the new high-rises under construction in the city. The best place nowadays for tower crane watchers is downtown, just north of the Cleves Landing, where four of these beasts were employed in Pinnacle Entertainment's construction of a casino and hotel complex. It's a huge operation, big, heavy, and industrial, but with the precise timing and coordination of a dance. Well, it is. It's almost like a ballet when you see the cranes working and uh, synchronized together. The crane operators are all in contact with each other through radios. Uh, there are, are uh, uh, laborers, carpenters, superintendents on the ground that help them get their loads from point A to point B. Uh, as far as picking the loads, uh, the crane operators certainly have a touch and a feel for that with the number of years of experience each of them have. And you know the cranes themselves, all of the boom arms are at different elevations, so the boom arms themselves can't collide with each other. But they have to be very careful and aware of where the, the loads are and, and the wires coming down from the boom arms so that the boom do, of one doesn't contact the, the wire or the load from another one. With hundreds of workers on the ground and tons of material swinging above their heads, there is no margin for error. And the latest computer technology ensures that there will be no collisions. These have a computerized system on them that avoids that it is an anti-collision system, first ever used within the country, that their sensors planted along the crane so they cannot get into each other. That assists the operator in being able to do his job well. Uh, each each uh, crane sends back a signal that we're able to also monitor down within the trailer itself that shows the position of each boom and also the hook location and also whether it's interfering or into the zone of another, another crane itself. On the other hand, they don't want too much communication on the job site either. Uh, anyone on the ground is, is capable of talking to it, but they have to have the proper radio. That there, so there's only one radio on that ground that talks to each crane. That's to eliminate confusion with each of the operators as to who they're dealing with. You can rent one of these, but get your order in early because they might have to be shipped from Europe, Asia, or South America. Depending on the height and reach, they range between $4,000 and $30,000 a month. But they save money in the end. Uh, the cranes themselves are, are probably the most important tool on the job for moving material into the areas for assembly. We're sitting here on approximately a six-acre site, and four tower cranes would do the equivalent of a number of of ground cranes, crawler mounted or rubber tired cranes. And then with the height that we have to go, the cranes were able to get up there a whole lot sooner uh, in the project without having to remobilize additional cranes. You know, with us, time is money, so the faster we can get things built and in place, the better off we are. The towers are a lot like big erector sets. Smaller cranes on the ground assemble the boom, the cab, and the counterweight arm. The towers are capable of jacking themselves up to whatever height they're needed. But as remarkable as they are as structures, each crane is operated by a person, someone who climbs the entire height of the tower every day and usually remains in the cab for an entire shift. In the world of construction, they are a breed apart. The guys themselves, uh, obviously you can't be afraid of heights. Uh, they spend a lot of time up in that cab. They have to have a lot of concentration about what is happening around them at all times and also focus on what they're doing. Uh, the cranes themselves move significantly up above, whether they're picking up the load or even swaying in the wind. And when nature calls? Um, usually a pretty interesting question for everybody. Uh, they, they do have ways of, of conducting some business uh, from up above, but other business they will have to come down in order to do so. It gets hectic at times. Uh, you're up there by yourself. There's a lot of things going on. So you see a lot of things up there. And then again, there's a lot of things you don't see up there. A lot of times guys go, oh yeah, I'm right here, you know, to your right, and when you're up there, it's a whole different perspective of what you're looking at. I mean, you see a bunch of people, but I see a man standing with his hand up in there, you know, unless he's jumping around, you don't notice it when you're up real high like this. You just enjoy it. It's a challenge every day. Even as it continues to change, the St. Louis skyline will remain one of the most recognizable in the world. 
reshaping the city is hard work, requiring big tools and people unafraid of heights.